just rings. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, God rings. Hallelujah, He rings, He rings. Hallelujah, He rings, He rings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. mighty name of Jesus Amen. we worship silent everywhere there is a song you sang now I want to believe you're not singing this song because you're just following the lead. I want to believe that you are here the 4th of February 2024. In the presence of God, you know that God is here. And with all your heart, you're telling God, is the one that matters in your life. You really, from the deep of your heart, despite and in spite of whatever, and you're telling God you are putting him in front, I don't want you to confess a thing you don't mean. Because God will hold you accountable. That's why I said, are you following the lead? Are you re really leading the song? If you say you put God in front, I want you to begin to understand this is the second month of the year 2024. In his presence, which you know he will be there, and he is. And you're telling him he's the one that matters. If you're speaking from your heart, not just because it's a song, a time has come that we have to really know our God. A time has come that we ought to really serve God in truth and in spirit. If you're putting God in front, 
If you're telling God that he is the one all, you didn't say he just matters. You said that he's all that matters. <laughs> that means if they take your job from you now, it's God that matters. That means they take anything from you that you count precious. It's God that matters. I want you to lift up your voice from your heart. From your heart, please. And just thank the Almighty God. Open your mouth and look back. If it's me that has kept you alive, you better begin to thank me. If it's your husband or your wife has brought you this time, if it's anyone, your director or manager at your place of work, because your salary is being paid, you don't need to thank your God. But if you look back and listen to yourself that at any time you go to bed and wake up, it's because God has kept you and sustained you. That about you, you came over, you didn't know how it happened. What is that ever that is happening in your life today? The Bible says in all things, give thanks to God. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for my soul for delivering me from darkness into this marvelous light. Thank you, oh God. You found me. I never did. Thank you, oh God. Now when they call my name to appear for destruction, you stand and say it's not yet time. Thank you, Father. Thank you because your God has seared all things. You're the Alpha. You're the Omega. Before anything begins in our life, even before we began, you have been the beginning. <laughs> and therefore, there is no beginning before you. That's why you know all things. And we call you the beginning and the end. We call you the Alpha and the Omega. We call you Father. Thank you, Lord. A shent of days. Glory and honor be unto you, holy name. We've come here to give you thanks. Please accept our thanksgiving. In the mighty name of Jesus. Light of the world, you step down into my darkness. My eyes, because I lack the understanding. No, 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 no. We need to see, Father. Beauty that made this heart adore. We say we give it all to you.
Are you sure? Here I am to bow Are you down. sure? Here to I am comes. to say that you're my hey, God. The Lord, my hope and trust is you're all together probably all together Thank you for stepping into the darkness of this earth. You took it upon yourself to lay down your life for us. We are declaring to this afternoon, Father, that you open our eyes of understanding to see the events, to see this journey the way it thinks. Or it was that led Jesus to the cross. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you at this moment. May I not speak of myself or how to, or please anyone in this meeting. But let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be accept acceptable unto thee. Give me the unction, thou sweet Holy Spirit. And let the world today heal us. Let your world today that is sent for deliver us. Let your world today save our souls. Let your world reach to our needs as we represent this here today. And at the end of this gathering, Father, take all the glory. For we have come for you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Give clap offering to the Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes we just need to juggle things because of timing. And to live, let things be. Turn to your neighbor, whether you like him or her. Tell him or her, neighbor.
Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Welcome to the month of February. May the peace that passeth all understanding be upon you. In Jesus' name. Before we begin for the short time we have, please remember there is going to be general workers meeting compulsory. Except there is, you're going to work or there is reason for that. On the 10th of February, we start from 5 to about 7. But that is got it to see how it goes. And also there's going to be youth camp in Poland, which we ought to start to register. I want to thank God for the testimony. I want you to listen. We are coming to the end of today's service. They said, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. It's wonderful to see all of us seated here. You know, beautiful. It doesn't matter whatsoever. But the Lord has made it all to be beautiful for us. And it will end in praise and testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. The almighty God who has begun the work in your life and kept you alive to today has a reason for that. And he will really perfect all that concerned us in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for all the testimonies we had. To him be all the glory. The beginning of last year, I think I said something about childbirth. Then one day, one of our um, ministers here repeated that. That the way we see what happened in 2022, that from 2023, God is going to begin to multiply us here by birth. Can I hear a louder witness? And if you look at where we have been, it is all around every month we had. Even not only the niece, there's a sister here, sister gift, that also gave birth. You know, it's part of us. She used to come to church. So, glory be to God for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. And I want to thank God for my princess, my daughter, Destiny. Praise the Lord. Please help me to clap God for her. <laughs> Beautiful girl. She had her birthday on Tuesday last week. And so good that she wants to confirm it by doing extra, which I'm waiting for her daughter to do. She wants to do something. I ask her, no, baby, let me help you. My princess say, no, Papa, I'm eight years old now. That is, <laughs> praise the Lord. You see, children are very smart. And she reminds me now, it's no more seven years. It's eight. Therefore, something must come. You know, let me do something extra. Because my age is no more what you think. And I appreciate that. And she did it. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for my family. And I want to thank God for my life. There are one thing sometimes when I want to ask God, I inquire from God. God will begin to take me to a journey to look at even my life. You know, who owns it, who started it, who has it, who, I mean, all things is about God. That is why when we sing some certain song, please, don't just sing the rhythm or the lyrics or whatever. You're not singing to yourself. Pay attention to what you're saying. Let what you sing speak to you. Praise the Lord. And I, I cannot remember, brethren, the only thing I might have, maybe I just feel like tired or maybe cough that cannot keep me down or doing medicine. I can't remember the last time by the special grace of God I fall sick. Praise the Lord. And if they want to talk about workaholic, I am so busy. I do night permanent job. And I still coordinate with so many things that people cannot understand. Even some time in my working place, they come near me to begin to ask me questions. Some people want to force me to go and take sick leave. 
that you deserve it. <laughs> just to rest. But brethren, I just thank God. And that's my testimony. Divine health. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because of want of time, let's go quickly to today's um, sermon. And also thank God for all the people celebrating their birthday this month. May the Lord preserve you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord protect you. It shall be well with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Brethren, I was thinking to give a message that is biblical hearts. That was the message that has been in my mind. I was preparing, I was jotting down even in this thing. But at a point in time as this month is approaching, I felt in my spirit, I begin to hear different things. But I have been written down things, I've been pointing because that is the sketches before I bring them together through prayer. And I, I started hearing from nowhere, Jesus, Jesus' journey to the cross. Uh, uh, how? What? Jesus' journey. I felt it in my spirit. And why I try to push to give my message of, which I'm still going to preach, four or five biblical hearts, which I have been researching for us to understand things. But I had this. I said, okay, Father. And then the message began to come. And that is what we're going to be looking at today as the time permits. Jesus, I mean, Jesus' journey to the cross. This is the second month of the year. We've just started, you know, the month is still fresh, if we can look at that. January, first month has gone. And we are now in the second month. And if you look at all the evaluations we have been making and how we have been doing things, I think the most important thing a man should do because some of us have begun where we left it last year, the same way it is or it was, which is not fair. Number one thing that a Christian or a believer, anybody that names the name of the Lord should do, is to sit down and look at your journey with God. Your walk with God. How has it been fed? I want us to listen. It's not a time to laugh and play. Number one thing you need to take a stock of your life is, my journey with God, how has it been fed? The walk with God. That is number one thing. And it's still... Okay for us to think about that now. It's still okay to think about it now. And that is why I begin to look at this month. I don't know why. I say, God, say, this month is a month of reunification. It's a month of unity. It's a month, no matter how far you have gone or you think you know it, you have to come back to God and sit on his feet and inquire from the Lord. Don't assume you know it. It's a month. That is why I say it's a month. Of, a month you have to come back and unite with God. And sit down no matter how anointed you are. It's a different year with different challenges. With different things that you never know what is going to happen. Whether if Jesus is coming this year, nobody knows. So you need to call yourself to all that. Sit down. Just in a quiet time, leave all this business and begin to inquire from the Lord. Don't think because you're righteous, you know it all. And when you look at yourself, it's a month also to go and make peace. Whether it's your mother, whether it's your father has offended you or whatever, unite. Just make peace. I mean, whether the person accepts it or not, in your heart, Peace be still. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And therefore, when I look at this, brethren, I had the news, and when I'm, you know, preparing this message, I was like, what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? And why this message? 
You know, I was reading a newspaper. I saw something that really touched me. In Norway, they said they ordained a 29 years old boy, a transgender as a priest. And they said they have never done, you know, and the church is here. And he or she is going to stand on the altar to preach. It's not a laughing stock, brethren. I'm going to take out the journey of cross is an event. And I want to take course of that journey. Your journey starts the day you were born to your death. But I'm going to come to that. Please, let's not be distracted. And I begin to look at it. I said, it happens. It happens. A 29 years old young is a transgender priest in a church. And then, because I need to read and research and just know what is happening in the world, and sometimes I want to lock myself up. I say, God, where do we go from here? And people will still mock God. And there's something again that, you know, I don't know if it has been happening. There's now a wireless chip. They said, um, you know, it's for uh, ne neurological companies and manufacturers, especially they call Elon Musk, which is doing, trying to start now. It's a wireless chip that can be inserted on the body of a human being or the brain, which means that chips, you don't speak. But the chips can relate your think. The thing you're thinking, the chip will be it translate. You have not done it or said it. And it will be connected to your computer or to your mobile phone. They say it's for those that are limp. But you know the nation. Before you know it from the limpness of people, they will say, oh, we want to curtail criminal. You remember during the COVID. Oh, if they do this, they come with a law. If you don't have masks, you will not fly. If you don't have masks, you will not go and buy something. I was walking into a shop one day. They said, where is your mask? We can't let you be. I say, is this 666? They say, no, but it's mask. Praise the Lord. And it is real. Brethren, let's follow things. It was real that at that time, without mask, you can't enter transport. Without what is God showing you? The sign that when sixes come and you're left behind, you can't do anything without being inscribed six sixes. That was a show. And you know, when things happen, that was a show. God just used COVID to show us what is about to come. They will stand at the shop. Where is your mask? If you don't have, they give you. But you must be masked before you go in. Have you read meaning to that? And the chip is coming. They will make money and all the things. And before you know it, they'll begin to say, oh, because we are thinking the society is getting so criminal or whatever, or because we want to curtail human beings, this and that, which means the cheap we do, the things you're thinking will be revealed. The cross. The account of this journey in the scripture, invite us to meditate on the gravity of this journey so that we can daily give thanks to God. The Bible says in Psalm 92 verse 1 that it is a good thing to give thanks to God and to sing to his praises almost high. It is a good thing. So when the Bible is saying something is good, you know, brethren, one thing or the other, that God cannot give to himself is thanksgiving and praise. He can do everything. God cannot say, God, I thank you, God. One thing God cannot give. So he has expected of you and me. And he said it is a good thing, which means when you give thanks to God, the divine presence of God follow you because you have become a thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. And why is God saying that in all things? That is why I want to take an inventory of the journey of Jesus Christ that we thought that God has forgotten. We thought that God is being mocked. We thought that God is no more to be found. Therefore, I have my life to live. I want us to read what the Bible says about this journey. 
of the cross. Thank you, Father. Because of this journey, the journey of the cross, without the cross, there's no you and me today. So if you're thinking about God, you've not done this, God, you've not done that. Think about the journey. That's why God is bringing the journey of this cross that Jesus took. We want to take the events, what happened from the day one and the beginning of the journey. Passion has to die for us. Have you ever thought that the death of Jesus did not come so easy? And maybe when you're reading your Bible, you flip at it or you look at it, you think that, oh, they said this happened to him. It doesn't matter. I want to, because this journey we're going to take is in two phases. I want you to think about your life while we're going to study this as the time permits. If you're thinking that it doesn't matter to God or what is written in the scripture that happened to Jesus was not real. I want you to think about your life. If anything in that nature happens to you, how do you feel? The journey that leads Jesus to death. Brother, we need to ponder on this account of this journey that made us just to receive. Let us look at the Bible. John chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. Please listen. John chapter 1 verse 11 to 12. What's happening? This one is not showing. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them, gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Why I pointed at this is that there's one thing that this journey made us to be. It made us to become receivers. Which means you're not adding any work or anything on this thing that God, that Jesus has done. What God expected of me and you is to receive it that God himself sent forth his son to, win, to go through these things. And that is what is difficult for us to do. To receive that work which was done. To accept that work which was done. To believe in that work which was done. And again, to live in that work which was done. And that is, he said, but as many, he came to you, but as many that is, God made us receivers. And that is why today we say, by the stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. What do we receive? Healing by the stripes that Jesus has received. Everything. We are made righteous because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. What are we? We receive righteousness. We are just receiving. And that is the work that many have not accepted. And that is the work many have been playing themselves and playing God. And think that playing. You, we cannot take God for granted, brethren. Let me tell us the truth. God is not a man. He is long-suffering towards us. That he is not willing that any should perish. But a time will come. It will be all over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From what is happening today, there's no way God is not going to destroy this world. Like I was sharing with my brother, yeah, I had that, you know, I was watching CNN and then uh, the man who owns Facebook and Meta or whatever you call it was apologizing. They were shouting on him, forcing him to apologize. They said, because social media have destroyed children and destroyed families. They said, what are you going to do for those you have destroyed? He said, please accept my apology. We never meant to. We want to correct things. We want to, you know, try to secure things so that children can. And they have been debating even in Norway now that social media has become more worse than good. Listen to news and if they are the ones saying this. It's not what you see. The issue is that we Christians take things for granted. 
The devil is just, you know, devil doesn't create things. What devil does is he recycle what is happening and made it to become worse to people. He can't create because he's not a creator. He recycles. And that is why when you look at you, he will begin to recycle the things he knows that pains you. If you don't do this that has been happening, it doesn't pain you, you will leave. And then he will call that one that is paying is the one he will be recycling and bringing to your mind so that you will go down. Praise the Lord. So we see what is happening in the world today, brethren. Let, let us look because of time. The account of this journey to the cross. We're in the Bible. Number one thing we have to learn from this journey, brethren, whether you accept it, whether you like it, whether you believe in it, is that the journey of the cross that Jesus took, number one thing is that that journey was very, very difficult. When you say that something is difficult, it was very, very difficult journey. Let us look at the Bible. Praise the Lord. Luke chapters 2 verse 6 and 7. His life here on earth was so dear. And he said, I saw it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, that is Jesus, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The beginning of this journey was Jesus became poor. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine what the Bible says here? He was born in poverty. This was Jesus that left heaven because of to take a journey, which we're going to read the events of this journey. The first thing happen is that the Bible, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the owner of all things, when something is taken away from you, sometimes we begin to overreact because that has become an idol for us. And that is why sometimes God allows things to happen in our life and see that this one will think that that is where all centered. If I take it away from you, what happens then? Jesus Christ came. The Bible said he became poor. He was born into poverty. We are talking about the journey now. The first thing is that no place to put him God. He was the owner of heaven and the earth. The biggest mansion. But he came down and was born in a manger. And they used a swaddly cloth. And which represents death from the beginning. Which means he has come designed to die. They started it. And they said, because there is no room for them to put him, the king of kings. Why did Jesus accept this kind of thing? When I look at it, I say, but God, it's just because of you, not anything else, just for you and me. Was born into poverty. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. He said, for ye know the grace of Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he was rich. Yet for your sakes, he became poor. Though he was rich, but for your sake. I want you, as we are going through this journey, think, can you as a person, Tell yourself the truth. Whichever Bible we read from now till we close. Tell yourself the truth. Can I as a man, remember it's a, a word of God that became flesh. The same thing that you are today, he was. Because he was on earth. It's just the same way God is with us now. God is with him. So there's nothing to make excuse about. The pain you have, Jesus, and we're going to look at it. So you will tell yourself the truth. Can I even do this for my own child? Or my own wife or even my husband. We're not talking of people. He said, for your sake. And whenever we read something, I don't want you to be looking at generality of people. You want to look at your own self. What the Bible is talking about. He said, for your sakes, he became poor. 
that ye through his poverty might be rich. The second thing, this journey was difficult. The second thing that happened was members of his own family at first did not believe in him. And as you're looking at yourself, you begin to wonder why are you going through some certain things in your life? I will come back to the conclusion of this. Why is your Savior took the first journey to show you what is about to happen? First, he became poor. Sometimes we die of that. And now the Bible is saying that members of his family, we are looking, treating the difficultness of this journey. Members of his own family at fault did not believe in him. John chapter 7 verse 5. Members of his own family. Immediately you announce yourself born again. Know ye that members, some of the members of your family will hate you. For neither his brethren believe in him. Somebody that was born and now he's a member of the family and they did not believe in him. Born poor, they did not believe in him. They did not believe in him. How difficult it is that after doing everything you want to do, you're coming back to your family and many people are rejecting you. They don't believe in you. They're just looking at you, welcome. Oh. But how do you feel in that family? How do you feel? When you realize there are people around you in, my, in your own family that does not believe in you. Jesus Christ is doing it for your sake. And for my sake. Number two, he was constantly opposed. He faced opposition far worse than whatever situation you have in life. Constantly opposed. Remember that Jesus has authority to do all things. He has the power. How many of you will have even had power of Jesus and authority? And all this thing is happening to you will not effect change immediately. That is why sometimes they will say, oh, why are you in this situation? Why are you? Look at what is. Jesus has the power to change things. But he went through it. Humbled. He was opposed as the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us look at Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3. As he's getting closer to the cross, the more difficult it becomes. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. That enjoy so much opposition and calling of name. Remember, this is someone that came to save you. The only thinking that a man has is to kill him. Think about your life. You meant well. You love. And the only thought someone will have is to kill you. They said, look at it. He endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be weary and faint in your mind because of the opposition of your situations that is causing to you. Contradiction. You speak, they turn it around. You want to pray, they don't want you to pray. And they will question you and mock you by standard of appearance of you. Though they don't know that when your outward man is perishing, that your inward man is being renewed day by day. Because it's not the outward that matters, but what is in your heart and what God wants to do with you. Such a contradiction. He was falsely accused. He was falsely accused. How difficult the journey it was. Mark chapter 14 verse 53. This is somebody that can never lie. But he was accused falsely. He said, for many bear false witness against him. But their witnesses agreed not together. Many bear false witnesses against him. But their witness was not agreed together. Let us look at Mark chapter 14 verse 65. Be taking record of what happened to Jesus along the way to this cross. He said, and some began to spit on him. God 
and people we are spitting on God. People that he has come to save. And you think that after all this, you say, I don't want to believe in him. And God will not, there will be no destruction and judgment. And you think that you as a believer going through these things. And you're calling upon God that God is not hearing. When because they hate you for, he says it's not because of whom you are. Or because you profess and confess Christ. And he said they will hate you only for mentioning Jesus Christ. And this is what the Bible says. And some began to spit on him. And to cover his face. And to buffet him. And to say to him, prophesy mockery. And the servant did strike him with the palms of the hand. They slapped him. And when they were slapping him, you know what happened? He remembered you. And said, I will not go back because of you. Because of you. He can't stop. He can cause everybody to die. But he said, because of you. He has you in his mind, says the Bible. And he looked at slapping. They slapped him. God. And he said, I've come to lay down my life. I'm going to that cross. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So brethren, this journey was difficult. We're not going to read it, but he was tried and mistreated. And again, in this journey, along this journey, Jesus Christ was called a man of sorrow. It was a journey, number two thing you have to learn from, it was a journey of sorrow. And that is why the Bible called him a man of sorrow. Matthew chapter 26 verse 38. Rejected, abandoned. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. Even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. But did they do that? No. Let us look to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3. Isaiah 53 verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. I don't know who is the man. Check yourself. And he said, this man called Jesus was acquainted with grief. Do you know what he means? He was acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were faces from him. We turn our back. Are you not doing it today? We hid. And he became a man of sorrow. And we esteem him not. He was rejected. Another thing you have to know about this journey, I think I will not finish here is that this journey to the cross was a lonely one. He walked the difficult journey through, through. Jesus was surrounded by people, but he was lonely. Look at us. He was surrounded by a crowd. They just came to smile, and, but he, he was so lonely. that they would just, after they go their own thing. He was so lonely. The only one that tried to help him out, that vowed and said, no matter whatever was Peter, but a time came, the Bible says he denied him. He went back to loneliness. He denied him. And he said, even cause be to anybody that will say, I know Jesus. Peter denied. Jesus was always lonely, though there was crowd. And the only thing that is in his mind is you. Not that he cannot stop. That is why even when he cried, he wanted to end it all. But because of time, next time I will continue with the lesson. But one thing I want to ask us now, one thing I want to ask us, brethren, we are all in a journey from the moment of birth we are on a journey to death. No matter however you see it. 
from the moment of birth, we are all on a journey to death. It is also important to know that there are those who are on a journey to hell. And there are those on a journey to meet Jesus. If you're on a, this journey to meet Jesus, it means your journey today will sometimes correlate with the journey of cross. Which means sometimes you will feel rejected. If you're on a journey to meet Jesus. Sometimes you will feel lonely. Sometimes you feel abandoned, though you have cried. Sometimes you feel pain. Sometimes you ask questions that no one can ever answer you. Oh God. If you're on a journey to meet him, you will experience it. So count it not anything. But brethren, Jesus with all the power on him and authority, he went to the cross through humility. He went to the cross through suffering and brokenness. And that is why me and you can be called but No wonder Jesus, God said, I know the thought I think about in you. If I can allow my own son to go through these things, how much more? And in your pain when you call upon me, because I know what pain is, say the Lord. Jesus came to experience pain. So you cannot tell him about pain. He came to experience alone. You can't. There is nothing in your life today you can say, Gee, God does. That is why he says he's a compassionate God. Compassionate is becoming you at that point in time. And that is what God normally do. And the grace will be there. How do you see tomorrow you don't know? The day come where you will weep and weep alone. And you look at the world. And you can't get an answer to anything. Jesus did. How much can we give him thanks? He went to the cross through him. So we take the journey to him. The question is, are you in a journey to heaven? And experiencing what Jesus went through. Do not give up. But always give thanks. For if God can go through this by himself know that it shall end where we don't. But above all things, if Jesus meets you at this point, no matter whatever you're going, I say, my son, return home. How great joyful should you be? Because I tell us, I said this one time, the world we are living today God is merciful, but I have touched God. We have not God enough. And I don't know what is going to happen. Daddy Gio said the wind is blowing. That's a big st statement. The wind is blowing. And brethren, in the other hand, are you not yet in journey to heaven? Repent and make a decision for God cannot forget and let go this journey of the cross. The journey that his son took. Oh, we are just already to. Let's just read this final and then we we'll rise up. John chapter 19. Please quickly. The media, I think, I never looked at. We are three minutes ahead. John 19, 30, 34, 35. I've skipped my teaching. Let's just read it. And John 19, please quickly, so that we rise up on our feet. John 19. 30, 31st. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side. And for with came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record. 
and his record is true. And you know where that he said true? That ye might believe. But one of these, praise the Lord. Is that at 435? Praise the Lord. That ye might believe. Time has followed me. When he said it is finished, still yet on death, a soldier came and used a spear. And that is why today the blood of Jesus speaks, speaks, speaks. Shall we rise up? Even on death. Just by your head, one minute to stop. Just one minute to speak. We will continue the message. The journey Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for answering and speaking to us. May this word not fall on the ground. For it is true that Jesus already died and went through this pain. Help us, O God. Holy Spirit, continue to speak to us today. Now we all here, we have an encounter with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus pray. Lord of God. Shall it be in Jesus' name? February will receive the best of faith.